Hey everybody, it's John and I am here with Terry Johnson from Firearms Legal Protection and we're at Wilderness Tactical Products in Phoenix. They give us some space here. You guys know I use a lot of their stuff. I want to talk about an interesting one today. We're talking about this idea of imminence and an imminent deadly threat. You hear that in self-defense discussions and self-defense law all the time. So let's talk about defining what an imminent deadly threat is. Today's video is brought to us by the generosity of Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners. You win the fight and they will help you win the fight after the fight for the rest of your life. There's a link in the description for a coupon code for a discount for all active self-protection watchers. So Terry, you, you talk about this in your classes on the legal use of, of self-defense in Michigan all the time. Um, and I think it's an interesting uh, idea of the difference between fear versus imminent fear. Yeah, you know, most people, you know, have the notion, like, you know, they'll call 911 or tell a police officer, I was in fear for my life. Well, that's wonderful, but guess what? That's not the legal standard. The mm. legal standard is I was in imminent, Im not, you know, intimate, not like you're afraid of love, right? Imminent fear of death mm. or great bodily harm. And that means it's happening right now, right at that moment. You know, I, I tell people all the time, you obviously know I live in the Michigan area outside of Detroit, and you know, if I go into Detroit, am I in fear for my life? Yes. Does that mean I get to shoot people? No, it has to be the imminent fear. It has to be happening right here, right now. And there, there's this interesting thing of moment by moment. That imminence means, again, right now. This moment. This moment. So walk us through where moments matter. Well, for example, um, let's take if someone is coming at me, you know, we hear the, the tooler drill, you know, 21 feet out, etc. Um, is that a bright line? Possibly. But let's, let's move it back for a moment. If someone is 50 feet away from me and they've got a gun, is that an imminent fear? Yeah, I would say so. What if someone was 50 feet away with me and they had a knife? Is that imminent? Eh, probably not. What if they were 50 feet away and they're yelling and screaming and just throwing their hands up, I'm going to get you. Is that imminent? Definitely not. Right. So well, and again, so if matters. somebody has a, a holstered gun on their hip, well, wait a minute, they put me in fear of my life. Well, wait a minute, in what fear? Were they menacing you with it? Were they, you know, if, if he's pointing a gun at you, that's imminent fear of great bodily harm or death. Absolutely. If it's in a holster, it may not be imminent fear, maybe coming later fear. Correct. And, and that's what the law basically describes. You can't use lethal force if you're not in imminent fear. And that's the whole thing. we got to get that word in our head. Imminent, 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 right here, right now. Not it may happen, not they've been saying this for months and... You know, I, I believe it's about to happen. It's actually happening right here, right now. There's little to no doubt about that. So here's the, the question that I want to ask. So it's a tactic that I've seen used in uh, armed robberies sometimes, where the guys will come, draw a gun and flash it around, and then put it away. Um, now, I've seen that, especially in Central and South America. I uh, haven't seen it as much here in the U.S., but occasionally. And it seems to me that they do that so that maybe somebody looking from the outside couldn't see. They use that as camouflage. Um, okay. But it, it seems to me then they're still threatening me with that gun because they say, look, I'm going to shoot you with this gun even if they put it away because they're trying to hide it. Can I still claim imminence in that instance? Honestly, I need a few more facts. You know, so for example, if um, let's say you flash the gun, you've put it away, Am I in imminent fear at that point? Well, I guess it's going to depend on circumstances. How close are you to me? What are you saying? You okay. know, if I see you go back and try and pull it out again, now I know you have a gun. There is no doubt in my mind that you have a gun. Guess what? I, at that point, believe I can use lethal force sure. because now I am in fear of death or great bodily harm. But say, so again, I go, I go, boom, I pull the, you know, I pull the gun out because I'm an armed robber and I go, listen, you're going to give me the money, right? And I put that back away and I go, you're going to give me the money or I'm going to shoot you. But it's not out in the moment. I, I mean, I still go, look, he's still threatening me with that gun that I know that he has. Correct. And, and again, under those facts, I would agree with you because I have now produced, I've now shown you that I have the opportunity to, you know, use lethal force. Um, to protect myself from what? 
death or great bodily harm. Okay. And uh, on the other hand, just somebody, if I know, for instance, we're getting in an argument, and I know he's got a gun on him, right? Because for whatever, you know, it's my buddy who I know or right. some other guy that I know carries a gun, and we're having an argument, but he hasn't threatened me with it. I might say, but I know he's got a gun and he can shoot me. But unless he's threatened to do that, unless he makes a move for it, exactly. Now I don't have imminence. Exactly, because you know you take that take a police officer, okay? Um, if you had an argument with a police officer over a ticket or something along those lines, he's got a gun on him. You know he's got a gun on him. But guess what? You don't say, "Oh my God, I was in imminent fear of my life because he had a gun." No, it's only when someone makes that move or or that motion to produce or, mm -hmm. or display that firearm in order for you to be able to use lethal force justifiably in my mind. Well, and how I've heard this explained a lot is the triad of ability, opportunity, and jeopardy. Yes. So in other words, we know that he has the ability to do deadly force, to do deadly harm, the opportunity, so in other words, there's a, there's a proximity issue, there's, there's uh, a contact that he has the ability, and then that you are in jeopardy of him using that harm, which some folks would argue is what they call intent. He has the intent to do you deadly harm, right. but that jeopardy, that immediate jeopardy is where things come in. So Immediate, imminent, immediate, same word. Ah, so in, there's an interesting one too. Imminent, immediate, kind of an interchangeable term here. So guys, make sure when you're using deadly force, when you're thinking about deadly force, it has to be an imminent, deadly threat, objective, reasonable evidence of an immediate or imminent deadly threat. Otherwise, you can really get in trouble. Where I think this might get people in trouble a lot is that whole chasing fleeing felons thing. Yeah, because what's where's the threat? If you're chasing someone, how are you in imminent fear at that point? Well, they may turn around. They may do this. It's not about may. It is what's happening at that particular moment. So there's an interesting bit. So if I'm chasing a fleeing felon and I'm shooting him in the back, shooting at him in the back. I'm, I'm probably not under an immediate deadly threat there. But again, if in that moment I'm chasing him because I want to grab my stuff back, that's probably reasonable, maybe maybe stupid, but it, it's legally defensible. And then he turns towards me with the gun. Now I, again, get that immediacy back. I get that imminence in that moment. You do, but again, let's, let's figure this out. Where is this happening? Because again, let's go back to if this is in a state where you can protect property. Mm. Yeah, you probably can. If it's in a state where you can't protect property, probably not. And even in the states where you can protect property, you know, you and I have had this discussion, for example, Texas. Very a unique. lot of people think, hey, Texas, I can protect my property any way I want with lethal force. That's not true. There are some standards you still have to meet. I guess I'm thinking a guy who threatened me with deadly force, maybe he's got a gun on him or whatever, he runs off and I'm chasing him down. I don't shoot him there because I'm, I'm trying to get my stuff back and see where he's going. And if he turns around again with that gun in his hand that he's already threatened me with, now we get another instance where immediacy might show up again. It is, but I, I want to caution, caution you on that. I want you to think, what would a jury think about that? Yeah, I chased him down and started the I, fight here. Exactly, because now you've kind of put yourself back in the position of a, you know, you're kind of the predator at that point because yeah. you're chasing. So even though they took your property, and I'm not saying... You know, they're justified, but there comes a point where you have to cut it off. You're kind of putting yourself in the position of playing dirty hair for all practical purposes. So guys, you better understand this idea of imminence and immediacy, because that's that idea of I must, I just have to use deadly force right now, or bad things are going to happen right now of such a level that I just can't cotton it. So Terry, it's a good discussion, and I really appreciate the insight. Thank you.